Behind me is Air Handler 1. Um, we have two air handlers that are here on, on this, um, in this particular building. Um, and both air handlers are uh, variable air volume uh, systems, both with supply and return fans, uh, both with full economizers. Um, in addition to the economizer section on the outside air, they have uh, Ebtron airflow stations, which I don't know if you're familiar with the Ebtron airflow stations, but uh, they basically calculate the outside air or CFM going through the device. So you can visibly see on the digital display like how much airflow is truly going through the economizer, which helps obviously for Title 24 and maintaining outside air requirements. So um, again, Air Handler 1, behind me there's two inverters. Um, these inverters, even though they're I think they say train, but uh, these are rely. Uh, excuse me, they're. Um, uh, yeah, um, oh my gosh, these are um, Danfoss drives. Sorry, these are both Danfoss drives. Um, we have two styles of drives. We have the ADBs with electronic bat bypass, and then we have the, the Danfoss drives. These have um, uh, magnetic starter bypasses where the. ADBs have the Eclipse Bypass. So anyways, um, you guys are familiar with, obviously, inverters, and I'm not sure how much you're involved with BFDs on the campus. Um, assume you work on them. They receive uh, incoming voltage of 230 or 460 volt three phase. And uh, what they do is there's some rectifiers and some capacitors and, and some devices internally that takes the AC voltage and makes it DC. And there's a 600 volt DC bus, and then no different than AC sine wave. You have obviously A, B, and C phase. You have three separate triacs that actually turn on and off, um, each one uh, in a sequential order to simulate an, a DC sine wave. And so we can make uh, the output voltage instead of running the motor at 460 volts, we can run it at 127 volts. We can run it infinite number from 24 volts all the way up to 460. So that way we can change the motor speed. And uh, we could take the automation system and we could give it a signal, we have these 0 to 10 or 4 to 20 milliamp, and then we could vary the speed um, into the inverter uh, or coming out of the inverter by the external control signal. So that's kind of how these work. Uh, basically you're making a simulated AC sine wave once the actual leaving voltage goes to the motor. So um, Obviously, there's a keypad. Uh, there's manuals that are here. One thing about the inverters, um, obviously, you want to keep them clean. There's small fans in them that usually help uh, ventilate the cabinet. So by any means, if you're already working in 480 volt, obviously, you have your own lockout tagout, tagout procedures to stay safe. Um, to lock this out, you'd have to go, obviously, to secure it. You could go here if you're trying to get into the fan section. But to physically maintenance the drive, you want to go back to the breaker lock and tag it out, obviously with NFPA 70E, electrical safety policies with OSHA, you know, um, you want to lock it all out and you want to come back and you want to use like a CO2, uh, you can use like a, a laptop um, disposable cans and kind of blow them out, um, try to keep the dust off of the control boards. That's what mainly causes problems is internal shorting on the board because there's debris across it. Um, drives are tried and true, they're getting they're almost, they call them throwaways anymore because they work so well and then over time, you know, eventually they'll fill just based on use, but they're pretty dependable, really dependable. So um, in an event that you had a situation where the inverter uh, stopped working, then you could physically turn the, dr the drive off. You could push, there's a hand. Um, uh, so you have an auto, you have a off reset, a tripped, and you have a hand on. So. Uh, if I were to turn it off, I could say, you know, turn off, and then ultimately it would, it would stop running, and then you can put it in, in the full bypass if the inverter failed. So, if, so I could actually turn off. Do I, can I turn it off? Do you mind? So if I were to turn this unit off, uh, even though it's off, let me go to the other side of the return section. Sorry. And turn it off. So now we're turning it off so both fans are actually stopping. Um, as you can see, there's a, a command for it to be on. We're, we just turned power off the inverter, so you're going to see a flashing light because it's losing power. And uh, once it you know, powers down, um, 
then we can put it in the full bypass. So this is no different than a mechanical starter uh, that you'd have uh, in a non-variable speed pump or fan. Um, and you would just uh, switch to bypass. Bypass here. So that would run up to full speed. One thing you have to take account for is that these units control off of duct static pressure, right? So the varying speed based on a duct pressure signal that's two-thirds down the duct, that's why they have variable speed. And inherently, if you put it in a bypass, um, you could increase the duct pressure to the point where you trip off on an internal safety or a high static switch, okay? So when you run them in bypass, if that had to be the case um, because your inverter went out, you might want to prop a part of the door open like in the supply cabinet just to relieve some of that pressure during this just general, you know, um, I would say, uh, mode of, of emergency. You know, that way you don't, uh, you can run the unit in full speed, it's just that you don't want to have it at full speed if all your VAV boxes are backed off and uh, not supplying the total CFM by maximum design. So, and here, if I were to turn both switches off, the main power switches, now there's still going to be power still inside the inverter. We won't get inside the inverter. I'll do the same as the other one. Once you do that, we can start opening some of the cabinet doors. This is the return fan section. If you want to look inside the return fan section. So here's your return fan shaft. It's down below. It's drawing air from below. Return fan comes up. And obviously there's spring isolations. Um, obviously you have um, bearings. You have pillow block bearings. Sorry, pillow block bearings on the fan section. You see the grease tubing that runs inside, and then up here in the top left corner, you have two Zerk fittings, right, to grease your pillow block bearings. Where are the Zerks at? Yes. Sorry. You just got to be careful because this is an open shaft down below. Holy moly. Okay. So here's the two Zerk fittings, and then you obviously have a belt, so here's okay. our two Zerks. Okay. And then say be careful of the open shaft to get ready. Yeah, just be careful below, it's an open area. So inherently, I mean, to lock and tag these out, you could just push the levers forward and you can put the lock and tag out mechanism on the uh, handle. So I'm opening every cabinet door so you can see obviously what's inside. 